Time Time Metalhead Weatherman here. Hope everyone's doing well. It's been a while since we last made a video on here. I've been still trying to recover from whatever sickness has been trying to latch on to me. But we're hanging in there. And also, since it's the start of October, we're going to take a look at the weather ahead for the month here. Now, keep in mind, with us looking so far out into range here, a lot of this can end up being hearsay and the pattern can easily flip. But considering the fact that we know we're already going to be in a weak La Nina pattern, I have relatively decent confidence in these uh, outlooks and forecasts that we're going to be looking at here. Make sure you're hitting that like button, by the way, and also hitting that subscribe button if you're new around here. Definitely would help, and also it would be good for you to stay ahead of the curve here. But like I mentioned before, no surprise here, starting to enter that weak La Nina phase. We might already be in it. We're st still waiting on this particular graph here to update the uh, Nino 3.4 SST anomaly. These are four waters that are over here towards the central and uh, maybe even western Pacific here. But in any case, whenever the waters are about cooler than half a degree Celsius, that's what you call the La Nina phase here. And this, I guess you will call this kind of magenta-esque line here. Uh, call it whatever color you may, comes in, comes right into that negative 5.5 degree zone here. But we're going to be expecting this throughout all of the all of the uh, rest of fall here and pretty much all of winter as well. So once we get started here, we're going to be really going off of basically a setup where I'm going to go ahead and try and draw this out for you. Where we have two jet streams, we have the polar jet going up well north of us making a ridge out towards the west which is why we see those above average temperatures there it's going to be much warmer there and then the pacific or subtropical jet is going to be not too far behind it to the south just a little bit here this is a, basically a rough drawing though so don't take this as being completely accurate i'm terrible at drawing by the way but both of the uh, jet streams are going to be uh, pretty far to the north out towards the western half of the U.S. So above average temperatures are expected at this point. That's one thing I have extreme confidence in at this point. And it's also going to make for drier temperatures because it's usually the troughing that you would look for. Out towards the east, that's where things kind of change a little bit. We have a little bit of a dip in the jet stream or trough beginning to occur there. It's not a strong trough expected, but there may be some variances here and there on the day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis there especially throughout the entire season, really. We'll be doing a season outlook soon enough. But nonetheless here, expect things to be a little bit more active out towards the east and equal chance of above or below average temperatures. Now keep in mind, like I said, when I'm looking at these outlooks, these are based off of 30-day averages. Things are very much variable, and really it could take one week of change here to throw this out the window entirely here we'll be doing of course another update as we get towards the middle to back end part of the month but like i said before over here towards the west especially towards the rockies we're going to be expecting above average temperatures there and over towards the east equal chances of precipit equal chances of not only temp uh, above or below average temperatures but precipitation as well tropics are definitely a wild card and we'll talk about that in a little bit here Another thing I'm keeping an eye on, of course, and while it's not always accurate, it's a pretty good indicator of uh, some shifts here and there. It's going to be the southern Alaskan region here. A lot of our cold air usually will end up going through Alaska before heading out towards, let's say, the northwest and then moving its way through the northern states, maybe moving eastward. The jet stream, I do think, is going to play a factor in us probably not getting as much in the way of cold air over here along with a couple of oscillations which we'll talk about in a moment here like i said the way that jet stream is usually set up often is an influence to the precipitation we get and this is why the central part of the u.s is definitely look like looking like we're drier than average especially in this area in the dark brown here where we're getting into the 50 to 60 percentile and above here may even be some small areas on a week-to-week -week basis where we're even or with even uh, higher probabilities than that. Of course, over here towards the southeast coast, tropics are a big factor right now, especially with activity being at a all-year high. We have to be watchful all across Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and really, I would say, other parts of the Gulf Coast states too, maybe even as far as Louisiana. Of course, like I said, 
this is a 30 day average so we're looking like we have equal chances over towards new orleans and these guys over here towards biloxi mississippi but we'll have to keep an eye on that anywhere else in the white we're expecting equal to probably slightly above average chance of precipitation i would think over here there are some spots where i would say that chances for precip might be a little bit lower than average wow that was embarrassing anyway though we also look at alaska here and the weather pattern towards the southern half of the state looks pretty active northern half looks kind of busy so we could get either or at this point but in any case let's go ahead and keep things rolling here and we'll actually take a look at those tropical hazards here we're really not going to go too heavy into detail here we'll have a tropical outlook tomorrow for sure but you can see the above average chances of tropical development here we're above 20 percent in both the week two and week three outlook here you can also see the above average chances of precipitation over towards the caribbean of course also towards the main development region and also off that west african coast so expect things to still remain pretty busy through a good chunk of october here we're still in the peak of hurricane season but we're going to be we're supposed to quickly be waning but i think this year might be one of those times where it might be a little bit more anomalous where we might end up seeing a bit more activity later in the year i was expecting a lot more activity i would say towards maybe july and august but obviously we didn't get that and i guess we're making up for it now well like i said we'll get into further detail with that as we go into our tropical update tomorrow here so what we're going to be looking at now is our oscillations here we have two that we pay attention to very closely we have this one right here that looks like at the north pole this is the arctic oscillation and then over here towards greenland our north atlantic oscillation right now we're in positive phases as represented in areas in the red slightly higher pressures and also warmer temperatures over there as well so if we take this along here we end up seeing a positive phase dominant throughout the first week here and it's not really till later down the line where we have the opportunity for a couple of cold snaps to come in here and there northeast gets to be the beneficiary of that or it might be to your detriment here it's not going to be dramatically cold you're not going to get a polar vortex or anything like that so if you're seeing this don't worry about it too much but this could be a sign of things to come as we get towards maybe november and beyond but yeah, we're going to start to deal with a little bit more in the way of a uh, flip-flop pattern here. We're starting to see more cold air beginning to come into play as we get towards the middle part of the month here in particular, especially out towards the west. So we're going to be kind of shifting from that uh, positive PNA where it's warm out to the west to a bit of a negative PNA as we get towards the back half of the month here. Eventually, more and more cold air does begin to come into play as we get towards the very end of the month here. And we may even be well below average for a lot of states here as we go further along here. Like I said, take this with a grain of salt because the thing is, of course, we're looking all the way towards the beginning of November. So a lot can change between then and now. So what we're seeing here, we'll be, of course, making updates on. But that being said, though, this is a look at our jet stream and what we can expect throughout a majority of the month here. And to go along with that ridging, of course, ridging usually is a good sign for fair weather here. It's really not going to be towards like the middle part of the month where we start to see a little bit of activity out towards the west. And this is a moderately stout storm system. I'm not really expecting a whole lot out of it, but there could be chances of maybe some significant weather out towards the plains. Other factors, of course, come into play, but that troughing is always something to pay attention to. Ridging continues to be pretty dominant out towards the west and towards the central U.S. throughout the middle part of the month. Start to see much more in the way of troughing as we get towards the back half of the month. I think what that shift might be when we have our best chances for organized severe weather. And even then, that's still pretty variable at this point. Also, as we get further along into the month here, here's some more of that troughing out towards the east here. So very interesting times ahead here with all the shifting occurring here i do like i said i do expect chances for severe weather as we get towards the end of october maybe even towards november and how this will reflect on our temperatures is going to kind of surprise you a bit here and we're not going to be dramatically above or below average really anywhere at this point really the reason why when you looked at the climate outlook where we had that higher concentration of above average temp probabilities is really just the amount of days that we have them it's really more so consistency than extremity so 
based off what I'm seeing here, at least for the first couple of weeks, we're going to be above average, but it, at most we're maybe about 10 to 15 degrees above average. Stark contrast to what we've been seeing the last couple of months where we've been having those anomalous days where we're at about 20 or 30 above. So as we continue to move forward here, you can continue to see those above average temperatures kind of reigning supreme. And then as we go further along here, we start to get that little shift happening here. And we start to see those below average temperatures coming into play. And this is kind of where we get those equal chances over here towards the east because the first half of the month, we're actually a bit cooler than average. And then as we go further along, we end up starting to see those above average temperatures come in. And then towards the end, we start to see the below average temperatures kind of kick in for the very end of the month here. So pretty interesting month ahead here. Like I said, I wouldn't anticipate too much in the way activity outside of the tropics for the first couple of weeks, but towards the back half, we're going to be having to pay attention to that really closely so last but not least we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our weather pattern is going to give us based off of this look here this is the only model that i can compare this to so like i said take this with a grain of salt so we get better into range here we'll be able to make better updates of course but simply put, like I said before, the first couple of weeks, not really expecting much. Tropical um, development is always possible right now, especially given the hazards outlook that we looked at. Caribbean is very active, and that in turn can make the Gulf very favorable for development as well. As we continue to go onward here, like I said, over most of the U.S., the weather pattern is pretty calm until we get towards maybe the middle to late part of the month. We start to see more shower storm and even snow starting to come back into the equation here towards the higher elevations around the Rockies. Then as time goes on, as we start to get more cold air mixing with some of that moisture, winter weather chances are going to start to increase as we get towards the end of the month. After Halloween, we'll have to pay attention to a little bit more in the way of wintry precipitation as well. So anyone that's out west looking for their first snow, it's coming soon. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash that like button, decimate that subscribe button, and hit that share button. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care and have an awesome rest of your day.